Mm. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hello. Hey, teacher. Teacher, I have a question. A big question. Go ahead. Uh, <laughs> what's your name? Because yesterday I uh, started uh, later. <laughs> oh, no problem. My name is Alejandra. So you can call me oh. Ale, Alejandra, whatever you like. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. No problem. Thank you for asking. How is okay. everyone doing? Good. In my case, good. Very good. That's good. Happy to hear that. We're going to wait a few minutes for everyone to join. And in the meantime, as I told you yesterday, I'm going mm -hmm. to start by sharing the screen with the agenda mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. that we know what we are going to be looking into today while everyone joins. All right. Okay. Great. I already see seven people here, so that's super awesome that everyone's on time. Mm -hmm. uh, Bonnie, uh, Bonnie, or I don't remember, uh, her name, but she she was talk about the something special in the platform. I confused. No, I it no was. I think it was Marit. Yes, I was. It, it was because I was solving uh, exercise one point two, and mm. <laughs> everything is bad. Oh, so I, I will need her. I will need her. No problem. We will get to that in just a moment. Um, that's okay. We will be reviewing the exercises and we'll be doing them together. Uh, so we're just going to wait a few minutes um, so that everyone or as many people as possible can join. Um, and then we'll be going over the knowledge check and the exercises for the past participles, the adjectives, and we'll see what's going on with that exercise. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, thank you. No problem. All right. So, yep, as you can see for today, um, yesterday we watched the introduction video to this and we reviewed the conversation. I know that there were some words that maybe were not clear and that we will learn along the way. Um, were you able to listen to it, find any other expressions or words that you don't know or that you would like to know what they mean? Okay. All right. So as the exercise asks us to do, we'll be re-watching that video at the end of the four weeks. So you'll see that you'll understand it much better. As for okay. today, we will continue with the topic of past participles as adjectives and nouns. Do you know what past participle is? Uh, maybe anyway. I know, but I, I know, but I don't know how to explain, but I know. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> I think that is an action who is uh, how do you say occurring, uh, sucediendo. Okay. That's happening right now. That's Mm -hmm. That's happening right now, but in the past. Okay, okay, I see where you're you're where you're going. All right, okay, I an action that's happening, but in the past. All right, so we're getting there. We'll see some examples, and we'll see. Uh, we'll do a refresher of the past participle and how to use it. What about adjectives and nouns? Who can tell me the difference between an adjective and a noun?
What is an adjective and what is a noun? A noun is a, like, a, I don't know, it's the correct form, okay, but the noun is a, a proper name or, for example, noun is just like a bottle, is a tree, is a cup, is a noun. The adjective is, for example, is a blue cup, uh, uh, red uh, shoes. This is subject. I don't know if it's correct. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. So, and I see Marcela's hand. So let, let us know what you think, Marcela. Hi, good evening. Hi. Um, a noun is a person or or a thing that makes the action and the adjectives describe something. Exactly, yeah, you are both absolutely right. So a noun is a thing or a person or a name, right? And the adjective is a word that's used to describe the noun. So if I say a red car, the red is the adjective, car is the noun, I'm using the adjective to describe the noun, right? So exactly, I see that you already know what these things are. So what we are going to be doing is using adjectives and nouns with the past participle. Let's do a review of the past participle. Uh, it's already 8.06, so I'm going to get started with the class and we can go over uh, the topic. Going into the past participle, when we review past participle, what's important is that you know that we have regular and irregular verbs. So regular verbs, their past participle will be exactly the same as their past tense. So accept, their past tense is accepted. The past participle will also be accepted. But with irregular verbs, which are the majority of the verbs for this tense are different in their past participle than their past or regular past tense. For example, the most usual verb that you will see is the verb to be. And the verb to be in present, be, in the past, was or were, depending on the pronoun, I was, you were. Right? And the past participle for this verb is been. So I have been. You have been. Yeah. So they are used with the auxiliary verb of have. This is how we are going to be using the past participle. Have you already learned how to form a sentence using the past participle? Yes, uh, no. I, I, I would like to example, please. No problem. Okay, so let's use an example. Let me use Hola, this tool you. right here and put a sentence down here in the screen. Okay. So uh, I see Bunny, raise your hand. Tell me. I have been studying since I was four. That's right, that's a perfect example. I have been studying since I was four. What's the difference here? So been studying, now this is a past uh, that's also continuous, right? So I have been studying if we want to use, but this is a perfect use of the past participle. What we want to focus on and lo que nos queremos enfocar is this right here. This is a perfect use of the past participle. I think that the past participle is when the action starts in the past and continue in the present. Yeah, so um, the action could have started in the past and continues mm -hmm. in the present, like the example that Bonnie gave us, right? I have been studying since I was four. So I started when I was four and I am still starting 
today, right? We can also say, I have become independent. Me he vuelto independent, right? I have become independent. But it's, it's the same, the I have been. No, no. become no, no. comes mm -hmm. from the verb. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yes, I know. No, but I, I confused. But I have a question before. Mm -hmm. All time when I use the past participle, all time I begin with I have been all time. No. No. So the past participle here is mm -hmm. been. We are using mm -hmm. the past participle of be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. What you will always use is I have. So I, yes, have, I have, and then let's yeah. use past participle. Mm -hmm. Right. I have broken. Right, so mm -hmm. let's say I broke my, um, mm -hmm. my arm. I have broken my arm mm -hmm. many times. Mm -hmm. I'm a sports person, right? And I've mm -hmm. broken. I have broken my arm many times. The way we can contract this together is also I've broken my arm many times. Mm -hmm. And we have I've, I have, right? If you yes. want to reduce the scent. Thank you. Perfect. Does anyone have any questions on how we form the past participle? No, no question. Perfect. All right. If you do have a question, just raise your hand. I see that you raised your hand, Bunny. Yes, I have a question. Yes. And with the third person, we use had or have. For example, you saying for he or she? Uh -huh. Yes, we, I, we use she have been studied or she had been studied or she has been studied. Or come. So if we say she had been, we're actually talking about more of the uh, past perfect which we'll go into in a, in a moment. But if I want to say, instead of this sentence, I have become independent and I want to talk about the third person, I would say, she mm -hmm. has, ah, oh, I'm sorry. Has. She has mm -hmm. become independent. Mm -hmm. He has broken mm -hmm. his arm many times, right? Okay. I get it. Thank you. Perfect. Okay. But you have the you have a great point and a great idea. We'll do a comparison because you could say um, he has had his arm broken many times, but that's a different tense. We're going mm -hmm. into the like past perfect territory, and that's a different mm -hmm. topic which we will cover, just not right now. Mm -hmm. Okay, but never, for example, is never we can use, he, for example, is he had, because he had it in past in this moment, in that moment. It's not used. Uh -huh. So the thing is that we cannot do double past. Remember, you cannot um, insinuate that you're using the past two times. So if we were to say he had broken his mm -hmm. arm many times, When we say broken, we already know that this is in the past. So mm -hmm. there is no use to use two verbs in the past. He, mm -hmm. we, are, we use this one, this auxiliary yeah. verb in the present. Okay, okay, mm -hmm. perfect. Awesome. All right. So with this examples, we go into, let me clear the screen. There we go. With this examples, now that we know what the past participle is and we have a starting point, remember we have regular verbs and irregular verbs. For the regular verbs, it will be the same as in the past. And for the irregular verbs, it will be a different um, form of the verb. Let me send you this link to the chat so that you can have it and that you can review it.
That way you can save it and you can go over the images yourself and you can also um, search for the list and see some additional examples. So when we go over the topic of the past participle and how to use it with adjectives and nouns, we'll use it mostly to describe problems, not only for this, but mostly for describing problems. And we will see a video on that. Let me share the sound so that we can review the examples together. Okay, uh, Alejandra, please, can you add me in your a group? Because I, I, I don't know, I don't uh, appear. Um, uh -huh. I sent it to the chat here in Zoom. So within Zoom, we have a chat. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay, but it's not on WhatsApp. No, it's here oh, okay. in Zoom. Okay, 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 thank you. No problem. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and watch the video and we can go ahead and start on the topic of the past participle with adjectives and nouns. Describing problems one with past participles as adjectives. The jacket lining is torn. The tabletop is damaged. That vase is chipped. My pants are stained. Her sunglasses are a little scratched. Their new aquarium is leaking. With nouns. It has a tear in it. There's a hole in it. There is some damage on the top. There is a chip in it. They have a stain on them. There are a few scratches on them. It has a leak in it. As we said in our intro video, we will show you two ways to describe problems. The two sets of sentences you're about to see have more or less the same meaning. We may say something is torn or has a tear in it. As you noticed in our first sentence, we use past participle, this time again acting as adjectives. This is the structure we will use, subject plus be plus past participle as adjective. My dress is torn. The other way to describe a problem is to use nouns. In this case, we must use subject plus have plus noun, or there is, there are plus noun. In a real sentence, this is how it would look like. My dress has a stain on it, or there is a stain on it. Now you practice. Follow my example. All right. So after watching the video, let's go back to the sentences so that we can compare. What are some of the differences that you see with using the, um, the past participle as, ad, as an adjective and using it with nouns? What's the main difference that you can see? Um, what is, what is teacher? Um, yes. When you use uh, some participle as an adjective, you use the verb to be. And when you use nouns, you use the verb has or there is, there are. And isn't there is in it is and are also the verb to be? There is. Um, no, is it the existential verb? There is, there are. So is and are are part of the verb to be, right? I, it, yes. it is, they are. So, Bunny, I also see your hand. Yes, I see in the sentences that in the in the first paragraph, 
and it's on the final of the sentence. And with when we use the nouns, it's with on the middle, no, at the end. That's a good observation. That's a super good observation. So with when using them as adjectives, it's used at the end of the sentence. And when using it as a noun, it's in the middle. What else can you see that's a big difference when using as an adjective and as a noun? Thank you, Bunny. Hi, teacher. Hi. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I noticed that when you are using uh, a past participle form, uh, normally you have to, to uh, refer something, for example, you are talking about a jacket, a tabletop, a base, a cup, a ring, a house. And when you use uh, the noun, the nouns form, you don't have necessary to, to, to say what are you talking about. For example, I noticed that I, I don't say clearly the jacket, the tabletop, the vase, I, I just say there is a chip in it. Maybe because before I uh, used the noun form, I, I, I made a context about what, are, uh, what we are talking about. But I'm not sure if, if it, that's correct. Why not is that? Yeah, it's an excellent observation. It's a good observation. So that happens in this exercise because they are not writing it entirely again, but we could say that the jacket has a tear in it, right? The jacket has a tear in it. Um, their new aquarium has a leak in it. So they just didn't write the whole sentence again, but that's a good observation. Okay. That's a really good observation. So the main difference that I want us to locate is that when we are using the past participles as adjectives, this, for example, are regular verbs. So this will be in the past tense, right? As their form is. We are using the past participle of an irregular verb here. So this is something very important when we are using uh, the tense of the verb. When we are using with nouns, we are using them as a word. So it doesn't have a tense to it. It doesn't have a time that it's happening in. It is just a describing word. So the vase is chipped and there is a chip in it, right? There is a chip. It's a thing that's in the vase or that happened to the vase. And when we say the vase is chipped, we are doing an adjective. We are doing describing something about the vase. So excellent um, observation by Bonnie. When we are using it as an adjective, it will go at the end. Let me point it out right here. It will go at the end. And when we are using it as a noun, it has a different um, structure to the sentence. We will use the subject plus ox verb, which can be has, is, right? Plus the complement plus the, I'm sorry, the noun plus the complement. That giving us, for example, the jacket has as an auxiliary verb, a tear in it, right? There is a chip in it. There is, we don't have a subject for that one, but we could say the vase has a chip in it. What can you um, observe as well, whether you have a subject or not? What else can you see um, about us having a subject or not that changes the structure of the sentence?
Okay, so something super uh, interesting is that if we do have a subject, for example, the jacket, once again, the jacket mm -hmm. has a tear in it, and same sentence, Uh, for example, if we do... It no. is a tear in the jacket. There is a tear in the jacket, right? We can also say, say that. Or the example that I wanted to make was the vase has a chip in it. Or there is a chip in it. So if we don't have a clear subject. We will use the auxiliary verb is. Mm -hmm. And if we do have a clear subject, we will use has, because it has, right? Mm -hmm. Otherwise, there is or there are. We can also say there are some chips in it if there are multiple ones, right? Mm -hmm. There are some chips in it. there are a few tears in it. Right? Any questions so far? Why leaking is in present continuous? That's just an expression. There are always exceptions, right? Because you say their new aquarium is leaking. Um, there is, mm, it would not be correct if we were to say their new aquarium is leaked. Because if something's leaking, either you repair it and it's fixed and it's not leaking anymore, or it is actively leaking. So, Al contrario de, I'm going to explain this in Spanish because I wanted to explain why this is. Al contrario de las demás acciones, torn, damaged, chipped. If you damage something, puede estar ahí dañado. Pero if something's leaking es una acción que está sucediendo constantemente. Algo no empieza a, a filtrarse o a gotear y sucede solo una vez, sino que es constante, right? It is constantly happening. So if something's leaking, that's the expression that we're going to use simply because of the nature of the action. So that's an, an exception to the rule. There are always exceptions to the rule. Okay. Any other questions with the past participle as for right now? No. So in that case, let us do some exercises. Let's okay. do some exercises and- My pants are stained. Oops, sorry. Her sunglasses are a little scratched. They're new- There we go. Okay, so once we do the exercises, I think it'll be a lot clearer. So let's go over some exercises and see what we can say about that. All right, okay. so- Anyone, anyone who wants to answer. Let's go over the exercises. It says that we can use the sentences using past participle or using nouns, right? Use okay. the forms of the word in parentheses. So these are the verbs that we're going to be using. Leak, scratch, tear, hip, damage. The tablecloth isn't very clean. It is. It is stained. It is stained. What would be the other way to say it? If I wait to say, to say it has. A stain on it. Stain it. Exactly. So we can do it has a stain on it. Or you can also say it is stained, right? 
This is using past participle as an adjective. And if you are using nouns, it has a stain. <clears throat> stain is the noun on it, right? Let's do the next one. Could we have another water pitcher? Does everyone know what a water pitcher is? Do you know what a water pitcher is? Yes. What is it? Yes. What is it? Leaking. Is this like a jar where you put some water? Right, exactly. El pichel que le decimos nosotros, right? Uh -huh. Exactly. Okay. So, could we have another water pitcher? This one. Remember, leak. We have an exception. So, what would be the correct it's expression? Leaking. It's leaking. It's leaking. That's right. Is leaking. Mm -hmm. Perfect. The table looks pretty dirty. The wood. Mm -hmm. it's scratch too. Is scratch. Scratch. Is scratched too. Mm -hmm. So yes. the correct spelling for this word is scratched. What would be another way to say it if I want to use a noun? The wood mm -hmm. has, 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 a has a scratch on it. Has a scratch on it too. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Number four, the waiter needs a new shirt. The one he's wearing has tear. Has, has a tear, tear, tear on it. it. Has mm -hmm. a tear in it. Or past participle of tear. The past tense is tear. Past participle is term. Born, exactly. Yeah. So the one he is wearing is it's torn. Torn. Exactly, it's torn. Perfect. All right. Could you bring me another cup of coffee? This cup is chipped. Is chipped. chipped. Or has a chip. Has a chip in it. Exactly. Or is chipped. Whichever you like the best. You're saying the same thing. Is there a, a scenario or a place that you should use a noun or an adjective? No. Doesn't matter. However you feel it's best. All right. The walls really need painting. And the ceiling is damaged. Is damaged. Is damaged. Mm -hmm. is damaged. Or you could also say has them in it. Exactly. Or and the ceiling is damaged. So some of them sound some of them sound better in a certain way, right? Mm -hmm. The ceiling is yes. damaged. Why is that? Because we are used to very American English, very United States English. If you watch some UK, some United Kingdom or, or some British TV or series, you mm -hmm. will hear them mainly Scottish and Irish. You will hear them use a lot. Um, I've got to go. I have got to go. And that's the equivalent of our English or the American English saying, I have to go. They say, I have got to. It's mm -hmm. the same thing. It's just different ways to say it. So same thing with this. It's not that one is better than the other. It's just preference, right? Okay. All right. Teacher, sorry, yeah. excuse me. Go ahead. I have a question. Go ahead. Um, in the item number three, uh, I've tried to to answer. So the platform always uh, respond with um, an incorrect 
um, message. So I don't know how it could be the, the right the right the right form to 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 answer it because I had tried with with coma without coma without a point with point and I don't know what's what's the problem. Could you please could you please uh, show me how to do it? Yeah, absolutely, no problem. So. Um, something that happens with the platform, algo que sucede con la plataforma, solo para aclarar un poquito for everyone, eh, a veces, um, y creo que lo mencionó que sí se le colocó el punto y todo al final, sometimes that's what happens, a veces hay que colocar el punto final, a veces es una cosa por puntuación, ya lo he mencionado yo anteriormente como para que podamos corregir eso, para que sea más fácil para ustedes, pero puede que sea eso. Um, Eh, puede en el punto número tres entonces si lo vemos you can say is scratched with a point at the end to check oops I'm sorry here we go so you could do is scratched with a point at the end and it should be good to go as you can see okay or has a scratch on it. It may also be something about the, okay. So this one, we it's not getting it. Hmm. 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 <laughs> it should. Happy, happy. Yeah, <laughs> but I'm guessing it's, it could also be, let me check. It can also be uh, the spelling of the word. Sometimes, a veces no es nuestra culpa. Okay, I see what it Thank is. You. So you. it wants an, a specific answer. Let me bring that up. Pero sí, puede ser el punto al final, puede ser por spelling. So most of the time it's something like that. Um, as I said, I've already brought it up para que sea más fácil para ustedes, pero most of the time, it's just like a spelling thing. Okay, thank you. Awesome. But that should work. All right. So, bueno, any additional questions with this exercise that we just did? No, no question. All right. So, yo, so we have to put the point at the final of that uh, of that each exercise. Yeah, if it gives you an error, for example, as a default, you shouldn't have to necessarily, but if you know that it's right, if it's part of the answers that we reviewed today and it still shows up as incorrect, it is possible that it's just the point at the end and you can add it and that should be go off as correct. Okay, thank you. All right, any other questions thus far? No. All right, in that case, Moving on with our agenda, as you can see, we are going to be doing the listening exercise. So we will listen to this brief audio and review the problems. Listen to three customers return an item they purchased. What's the problem? Take notes. Then complete the chart. One. Can I help you? Yes, I bought this briefcase here last week. But there's something wrong with the lock. I can't get it to close properly. Let me see. Yes, I see what you mean. The lock seems to be jammed or something. No problem. I'll get you another one. 
Sorry about that. Two. All right. That was audio number one. What seems to be the problem? The lock. The big the face. Bookcase. Big face. The big face. So would you say that the lock doesn't work or the lock doesn't work? The first one the doesn't work. Doesn't work. Works. Who said works? Works with this. Why? Lock doesn't work. With, yes. Without an X at the yeah. end. And uh, someone who said that with an S at the end, why? Without. Without an S. Without an S. Because the auxiliar does. That's correct. So, look, it doesn't work, right? Doesn't okay. work. Okay. Right. The next is yes. Thank you. Let's review it. So, will the store exchange it? Yes. Yes. She said, let me get you another one, right? Let me get you a new one. All right. Let's listen to the second audio. Two. Excuse me. Yes. I wonder if you could take a look at these shoes I bought here. They're pretty new, but they seem to be falling apart. Hmm, let me see. Yes, this doesn't look right. The stitching is coming out. How long did you say you've had them? Only about a month. Here's the receipt. Hmm, yes. Well, let me exchange these for you. I'm sorry for the inconvenience. All right, what was the product that they had a problem with? Shoes. Shoes. Shoes, that's right. That's right. And what happened to the shoes? They were falling, falling apart. They were falling apart. Mm -hmm. What mean coming apart? It's uh, incorrect. It's so something what is the difference? Coming, coming apart, apart. Is, is it's not correct. What do you mean? Um, it doesn't really mean anything because you shouldn't say it. So something is not working, mm -hmm. something breaks down, it's falling mm -hmm. apart. We don't say uh, coming apart because when something breaks, it falls or tears apart or come, uh, or I'm sorry, or it goes apart, but it doesn't come, right? When you, when mm -hmm. something, uh, goes bad, it doesn't come together, but it falls apart. Yeah. All right. And get will the store exchange it? Will they get new shoes? Yeah. No, le creo. Perfect. I'm sorry. Uh, can you just please confirm what was the first item for the first? Let's go because ahead. I think I couldn't catch. <laughs> no you. problem. Let's go ahead again. Listen to three customers return an item they purchased. What's the problem? Take notes. Then complete the chart. One. Can I help you? Yes, I bought this briefcase here last week. But what was it? Briefcase. briefcase. Perfect. Does a everyone briefcase. know what a briefcase is? Yes. yes. Right, yes. exactly. And it is spelled briefcase. Like that. All right, let's Thank listen you. to number three. No problem. Yes, how can I help you? You see the, the inconvenience. Three. 
Excuse me. Yes, how can I help you? You see this shirt? I bought it here a few weeks ago, but the first time I washed it, the color changed. It went from bright red to light pink. How did you wash it? Well, I just tossed it into the washing machine with my other clothes. What temperature did you use? I usually wash my clothes in hot water, so I guess hot. Well, did you check the washing instructions? Um, maybe not. Well, you see here on this label, it says wash in cold water only. Uh-huh. So I'm really sorry, but since you didn't follow the washing instructions, I can't really do anything for you. <laughs> All right, so what was the product for the number three? Shirt. A shirt. A shirt. shirt. And what happened to the shirt? The color, color changed. Color changed. Color changed. Color changed. It was red, right? And it's, in, in, it's not anymore. It's, it went down. It's like an orange color because he didn't wash it correctly. Will the store exchange it then? No. no. Yeah, no, they won't because it's not their fault, you know? The guy just didn't wash it correctly. So we completed the listening exercise. Any questions with this exercise? Any word that you don't understand? Any expression that you would like to review? No, everything is okay. All right, everyone else? Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, on the first conversation, uh, I heard uh, that they said like, like jam or I don't know what what does it mean sorry Perfect. but I think at the end they said something like that or if you can type it because of maybe my listening it's like it's like yesterday that I asked for one word as well <laughs> for perfect <dump. laughs> no I will always be doing a vocabulary check because it's super important that you understand some of the words and we are expanding vocabulary and we tend to know the basic words, but we also have to learn expressions, right? So um, if someone that spoke English came here to El Salvador or went to Mexico, the expressions are very different. So we want to learn the American expressions as well. So we understand what they're saying. So the word that they used is jammed. When something's jammed, it means that it is stuck or locked, right? that it's not working. So the lock, is, and I, I think they said it seems to be jammed. So the lock yeah. seems to be jammed. So it seems to be stuck, it's not working. Perfect, thank you. Excellent, anyone else? Sure, I have a question. Uh, what's the difference the difference between exchange and change why in this exercise we use exchange instead of change so change excellent question so change to change something right for example you can change uh the tv channel you can change um, your locks from your door. You can change your shirt. But to exchange means turning in something and getting something else in return, right? So when you go to a store, you buy something, you can exchange the item some stores have a warranty of 30 days or 15 days, but you have to actually give them the item back so that you can get a new one. So if okay. you change it, it's just maybe changing between things that you already have or you want to change your car, right? But in exchange, you're giving something in return for something else. Okay, thank you. Excellent question. Sure. Yeah. Um, in the 2.2, will the store change mm -hmm. in different, right? 
exchange. Oh, yeah, that's misspelled. It should be exchange. Sorry about that. It's a mistake. Um, so it should be exchanged. Exchange. Will the store exchange it? It's a mistake. Yeah, yeah it's a mistake. Okay, thanks. Yeah, sorry about that. Good observation. Anyone else? All right. In that case, let us move on to 1.4 and to the next topic of our agenda. Whoops. Here. Which are need, using need and using keep, both of those verbs plus gerunds. What is the objective of this? So now that you know a little bit about um, describing your problems, we will put more context into it and see other ways to describe the problems and how to talk about them. We will do this first by listening to a conversation. So let's listen to it. Hello. Let me go back a little bit. And we can listen to the conversation. Part A. Listen and practice. Hello? Hello, Ms. Locke. This is Jack Burr. Uh, Mr. Burr? In apartment 305. Oh, yes. What can I do for you? Does your refrigerator need fixing again? No, it's the oven this time. Oh, so what's wrong with it? Well, I think the temperature control needs to be adjusted. The oven keeps burning everything I try to cook. Really? Okay. I'll have someone look at it right away. Thanks a lot, Ms. Locke. Uh, by the way, Mr. Burr, are you sure it's the oven and not your cooking? Listen to... <laughs> All right. So, based on the conversation, first of all, any words that you don't know? Or are we good on vocabulary? Yes. Cool. All right. So, we're good on vocabulary. What is something that we're going to be focusing on? Let me locate it right here. We will be looking at keep and need plus gerunds. So it keeps burning, for example, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. It needs fixing. These expressions need and keep plus a gerund, so a verb that goes in a continuous tense permanently. Um, is a very, very common thing to hear when you're speaking to someone else. And actually, um, this is the way that you will hear them asking for things to be repaired. So it's more common to hear, um, hey, my refrigerator needs fixing. My kitchen needs to be redone. My bathroom needs uh, or uh, yeah, my bathroom needs refurnishing. I need to uh, get painting my house, right? That's the usual expressions that are that are used most of the time. Let's continue watching. To another tenant calling Ms. Locke. What's the tenant's problem? Hello? Hello. Is this the manager? Yes. This is Ms. Locke. This is Lula Harris in apartment 216. Yes. How can I help you, Mrs. Harris? I'm having a problem with the electricity. What sort of problem with the electricity? Well, it keeps going off and coming back on again. I see. Is it just the lights or is it the appliances, too? Let me check. 
No, the refrigerator is okay, so it must be just the lights. I guess the fuse box needs to be checked. I'll come up and take a look at it right away. Thanks so much. You noticed another tenant called? So, some of the examples that we were able to see where it keeps going off and back on. It needs to be checked. So there are different ways to use uh, the keep uh, plus need or plus the gerunds examples. And these are expressions to explain the problems that we have, right? So it's not only going to be needs fixing or keeps burning, we can also use keeps going off. Uh, needs to be checked, and it's still meaning the same thing, right? Let's go over to, let me clear here, clear this right here. And we'll go over to a uh, more uh, in-depth example with describing problems over the TV. The use of need and keep. I'll ask you to stay around and learn different ways to report problems. Describing problems too. Keep plus gerund. Everything keeps burning. The alarm keeps going off. Need plus gerund. The oven needs adjusting. The alarm needs fixing. Need plus passive infinitive. It needs to be adjusted. It needs to be fixed. All right, so let's stop here to do a review of the information that we have. When we're describing the problems, we can use any of these combos. So everything keeps burning a gerund, a verb that's going to end in ing. So burning, going, um, fixing, right? Adjusting, painting. But it doesn't mean that we're talking in the continuous tense. It's just a gerund. So a verb with ing at the end to use for these types of expressions, right? So keep plus gerund, everything keeps burning. Need plus gerund, the alarm needs fixing. Or we can also use passive infinitives to be adjusted. Passive infinitives, that just means that we will use that formula. To be plus verb infinitive. unless we're talking about an irregular verb, pero we will get to that mañana. Un poco más eh, a profundidad de los verbos regulares e irregulares para este tipo de ejemplos. As for right now, we know that when we want to talk about a problem, we can use keep plus a gerund, need plus a gerund, or need plus a passive infinitive. It needs to be fixed, needs to be adjusted needs to be painted, right? Needs to be, what else? What else can you think? Repaired. Needs to be repaired, excellent. We can also use this for the items or the exchanges. So you have a problem, right? It, it doesn't have to be about fixing your house. It can be about anything else. Um, so my shirt uh, has a hole in it. It needs to be exchanged, mm -hmm. right? Different example. Mm -hmm. My shirt, if we're using keeps, keep plus gerund keeps, I'm sorry, staining, right? 
you're washing your shirt and it keeps staining your other clothes. So that's a problem. Um, my kitchen needs um, or you know what my house needs to be uh, to be sold right mm -hmm. need to sell my house my house needs to be sold mm -hmm. so i'll leave you with that for today we want to respect the times i know that you'll have things to do dejar de compartir por este momento pero we are going to continue reviewing this ways to explain problems and how you can use need, keep, gerunds. And we will also look more in depth into gerunds and how they work. Um, and we'll do a review of the gerunds so you know how you need to use them. All right. But that okay. would be all for today. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, teacher. Thank you, teacher. Goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you, teacher. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.